today. Blessings, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. Blessings. May the grace of God rest upon you and may his face shine upon you today. We are grateful for all that he has done and what he's doing. He's doing great things because his word promised that he would. Amen and amen. All right. So I'm going to see where we are. Yep. There we are. God bless y'all. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, y'all. Let's get started. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, let's get started. Today, we're looking at uh, 1 Samuel, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 22. We're going to go there. I am just so grateful for what God has promised in his word. Listen, God has promised to fulfill his word. He's pro his word does not, the scripture says, hey, Amber, the word of God says that God's, uh, his word does not return to him void. Hey, morning. Good morning, Pastor Brent, Sister Linda. Uh, doesn't return to him void. What does that mean? He does. It's not unprofitable. It actually, uh, it's like voiding a transaction like it never happened. God's word happens and God's word is working even now, but it's only working for those who actually believe what his word says, who actually will stand on his word, who will speak his word unashamedly. Let's get started because I got a lot to cover. So, Yes, right. Today is the 30th. All right. Listen, August is almost over. We're ready to go into September and we're expecting great things this last four months of this year. We got things to do. Listen, if you haven't done everything you needed to do, you need to uh, look at the fact you got September, October, November, December, four months to accomplish some of those things. Get on the on an agenda, get a, a, a schedule set and get done the things God is putting in your heart for 2022. I know he's giving you visions for 2023 and what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Listen, this is the time to go ahead and, and say, Lord, I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get direction for my next. I want to make sure that I'm accomplishing everything that I should right now, that I'm praying for my children, that I'm covering my spouse and my significant other. I'm believing you for better. Listen, I was telling a friend of mine last night, listen, I know things are not perfect in my world, but I do know that better is coming. I said that yesterday and I'm in every, every syllable of it. Better is coming. Change is going to come. Now, when we were growing up, Mother uh, Irma, we prayed, played hide and seek. And at the end, when they finished counting, they said, ready or not, here I come. And they would go looking. But listen, ready or not, 2023 is coming. Your next is coming. Let's get ready for what's happening next. Let's get ready for what God wants to do in your life. I want to make sure that I disseminate and give out everything the Lord has put in my heart to do. One of the things that um, has been resonating in my spirit for a number of uh, months all this year, and I'm going to read it to you, but it'll be in all of my books from now on. It says, may I leave a deposit in the earth that will resonate and reverberate for decades to come. That's what we should want, is to leave an impact in our lives, uh, for from our lives, so that God will get glory and somebody can follow behind. Good morning, Missionary Quinn. We should want someone to be able to follow behind what God has done for us. I want to make it easier for other women in ministry. I want to make it easier for other sons and daughters who want to um, do things for the kingdom of God, that they know how to do it in excellence. Because we can't offer God just any old thing, right? Let me get to my lesson. All right, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 22. We looked at verses 1 and 2 yesterday, but I'm going to read them again because I'm looking at verses 1 through 3. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. Verse 2, and he said, Lord, and he, sa and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. 
We talked about a fortress uh, when we talked about, I think it was Psalm 91, probably a couple of years back. A fortress was a fortified place that the enemy could not enter because you had everything you needed inside the fortress. You had the army, you had your food, your ability to feed and cover and protect yourself inside a fortified place, a stronghold, and my deliverer. David was testifying, this is who God is to me. He's my rock, he's my fortress, and my deliverer. And then in verse 3, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. God had proven himself to be a rock, to be a fortress, to be a deliverer for David. He says, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Let's stop there. I want to look at some support scriptures so that you'll understand uh, when David and why David. We understand that Saul had been pursuing David. And he wanted to kill David. The jealousy sprang up after Saul, Samuel, after Samuel, after um, David had killed Goliath. Remember? Hey, Sister Regina. Um, he, after uh, David killed Goliath, Saul became jealous. And this evil spirit sent from the devil would trouble him so that he could not sleep. And so David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, could come and play and calm Saul down. And that evil spirit would flee. Listen, let me do an insert right here. That says to us that music makes a difference. What you listen to impacts your ability to be at peace and to see. So when David played, the evil spirit left. David, and we have to remind ourselves, as believers, we can't listen to any and everything. Because it impacts our perspective. It impacts how we feel. You wonder why you always agitated. It may be that you're listening to the wrong things. Okay. So looking at 1 Samuel, verse 2 says, The God of my rock and him will I trust. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. Here, 1 Samuel verse chapter 23, verses 14, 15, and 28 says, And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hands. Understand this. Sometimes we're looking for God to write, Sister Glenda. We're looking for God to do something, um, what we would call supernatural. We don't believe God just, what God did here was God just hid David. He provided for him in the mountain. He may not have had what he could have gotten at the uh, king's table, but he had what he needed to sustain him. God provided for him while he was in the wilderness, while he was in a mountain in the wilderness. We must remember that God will order our steps. Sometimes you don't even know. You don't even know what God has preserved you from until way later. You don't even know what door God closed to keep you from harm until way later. Sometimes in your life, if you think about it and ponder about where you came from, you can get happy right there because you know God delivered you. Good morning there, Pastor Denise. God delivered you. God made a way for you. You didn't even know you were in danger, but he rescued you. Psalm, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. My response is, I can't sing that well this morning, but listen, I need you to understand. He rescued your life. He kept you out of dangerous situations, as the old folks say, seen and unseen. Thank you, Jesus. He shut doors that I didn't need to walk in. It looked like a good door. It looked like the right door. It looked like it was going to be a blessing. It looked good. It looked delicious. It looked appetizing. It was attractive, but it wasn't my door. Though someone was beckoning me to come through that door, God shut it down.
God will hide you. He will protect you. He will help you. We Sometimes we're saying, God, but that, I want to go through that door. Like my little great nephews. I want that. Because it looks appetizing. It looks good. But we must trust that God knows what's best for us. The scripture tells us, and this we know. I got to hurry because I got to get to my point. And this we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, to his plan, to his will. That's us. Let me read on. You're going to get it. Verse chapter 23, verse 25, Saul also and his men went to seek him, David, and they told David, wherefore he came down into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. You said, we th what's this? and God could have just killed Saul. So David could have assumed his position. He, God's killed other enemies when they were warring against his children. Yes, he did. But God chose not to in this situation. He wanted David to learn some things. And God wanted to exhaust. Exactly, Missionary Quinn. He watched for me when I couldn't watch out for myself. My Lord. Yes, he did. He hid me in the rock. Some things, I'll be honest. Some things I didn't, I, I miss. And uh, I, we were, a friend and I, we were, we were at a place and someone was, I, I guess they were trying to make a pass. And my friend told me later that the guy, and I said, was he really? I just totally missed it. Just told, I missed all of it. It's good to miss some things. It's good not to be aware. It's God protecting you. What you need to know, we need to rest assured he'll bring it to us. He'll help us to catch it. Next one. Verse 26, and Saul went on this side of the mountain and David and his men on that side of the mountain. What was God doing? Protecting David, showing himself as his shield. To See, a shield isn't always you standing there fighting against it. It is God directing you, ordering your steps. Verse 27 tells us while Saul was out pursuing David, God allowed the adversary of Saul to go in and invade the land. The Philistines had invaded the land. So Saul had to stop pursuing David and go home and handle his business as king. Let me get to verse 28. Oh, I'm going to run out of time, but I'm going to get to my statement I want to make to you. He says, wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. He had to change his pursuit of David so he could go fight the enemy. Therefore, because David wasn't his real enemy, the throne already belonged to David. It was just not the right timing. Let me get there. And he called the name of that place, and I'm not going to say this right, Selahamalekoth. I did listen to it, but it's got some, anyway. It means a slippery rock or the cliff of escapes. David escaped Saul because God ordered his steps. He protected him. He was the horn of his salvation. He was his shield. Now, David says this. This is what I believe. I know what calling on the Lord will do. I know what it will cause. God will rescue me. He will hide me. He will direct me. He will provide for me. And he saves me. That's not all. This is not an exhaustive list. But this is just what I had time to write. But this is the point I need to get to. I got 30 seconds. It wasn't that David couldn't conquer Saul, was it? Was it that God, what David couldn't beat Saul? Couldn't whoop him? Couldn't be victorious? Remember, David slew Goliath. Remember the song that the women sang when David slew Goliath? Here it is. Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his 10,000. So it was already clear David had an upper hand. He was already anointed king. He was already a skilled uh, warrior. Now, let me, let me get to this. This is the point I believe the Lord wants you to hear. Just because you can win doesn't mean you should engage the adversary. Just because you can get the victory 
does not mean that you can't, you should engage the adversary. Right, Roberta Ingram? He sure did. And that was because God, he knew that he was, Saul was God's anointed no matter what he did. And sometimes we're too quick to put our hands on people and our mouths on people because God, because of what they do. They're still God's anointed. They may cut the fool. Let me read on. When your time to occupy the throne or the high seat or become the CEO, you need to wait and move in God's timing. God chose to hide David rather than just to kill Saul instantaneously to place David on the throne. Just because you know you can get the victory. Just because you know you can uh, uh, have the last word. Just because you know that you can uh, do a bait and switch doesn't mean that you should. We need to move in God's timing, right? God has a way. Just because you know you can fix it doesn't mean that you need to. Just because you know that you have the upper hand, you need to wait to know when to show your hand. That's wisdom. Now I'm done. Let's pray, people who love Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. Teach us how to number our days. Guide our feet. Guide our hearts. Give us wisdom to know what to do, when to do, how to do. Don't let us be afraid that we're going to miss something. Help us to pray and get your direction. We don't want to move if you're not in it. We don't want to get involved if you're not in it. Lord, we know that you can stay the hand of the enemy, that you will be our shield and our protector. You will be our fortress and our deliverer. But God, we don't want to move outside of your timing. And just because we know we, get the, we have the victory doesn't mean we need to go and decimate the adversary. Help us to know when to do and what to do and how to do it. Teach our hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by our fingers. Help us to walk humbly before you. And we know that your word says you will make our enemies our footstool. We trust you. Help us to keep our eyes on you and not on people and stuff. And you said in your word that if we humble ourselves, you would exalt us in due time. We trust you. For better is coming and our greater is next. Cover our sons and our daughters. Cover our grandchildren, our children, our loved ones. Let your hand be upon them. Protect them from the devices of the adversary, from bullies at school. Protect them. Give them protection. <laughs> Protect them in the name of Jesus. We thank you now that your hand is upon us for good. Let your glory be revealed in our lives and your anointing break and destroy every yoke. In the name of Jesus, so it is. Amen. All right, my time is gone. I pray the word of God's blessed you. If it has, would you please share the video? Type in catch the replay. Hashtag graced for today. All right. I think that's all I have. I need to get that part out to you. That's what I did. I've discharged my duty. All right. So don't forget about YouTube. It's available. This video will be uploaded to YouTube in about 10 minutes. And you can share that with somebody. Um, thank you all for subscribing to YouTube, for following Grace for Today here on Facebook. Click the notifications so that you can get that. Hey, I saw that we had over 10,000, uh, 10,000, speak it so, over 1,000 followers. Thank God for that. And thank you for being one of them. All right. Hope that you will join me in the morning. Don't forget about my book on Amazon, 30 Lessons on Unapologetic Living. All right. My new book is coming out soon. I haven't finished it, but it'll be finished before the end of this year because I got, I got vision. I got plan. Yes, I do. And the Lord is helping me to accomplish his will. All right. So listen, I'm done for real this time. 
Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.